So welcome everyone to our webinar today. My name is Martin Schaffler. I'm product manager of Asapio for the Asapio integration add-on. And um, we will see today a uh, presentation from Christian Fristeler from Holden Shopping Europe on real-time integration with SAP Retail and Google Cloud. So over to you, Christian. All right, thank you. And good morning, everyone. Um, I will start my presentation. Just give me a second. All right, perfect. So, um, yes, I'm going to tell you a little bit about our journey. Um, for integrating our sub retail system um, with uh, Google Cloud PubSub and how we integrated our data from the uh, sub retail system into our e commerce platform. Um, maybe as a background, what was. Um, ah, just give me a second. I wanted to change the presenter so you can see, still see me. I just need to find that. Ah, here we go. All right. Sorry, I'm a, my webcam. I don't know why. Uh, I'm always a little bit dark, but at least you can see me now. Um, so, what was our motivation? Um, back in October 2021, uh, we migrated our SAP landscape from an um, on-premise data center to the to Google Cloud. And with that, um, we wanted to make more use of the um, cloud native services that are being provided by Google Cloud, such as um, Google Cloud PubSub. Um, but in, in addition to our move from the data center to the Google Cloud, um, our landscape, internal landscape, also changed um, a little bit. So in the past, our um, SAP CRM system was the main backend for our um, e-commerce platform. So basically, all the orders were placed first in the sub-CRM system and then transferred via middleware to our sub-retail system. And that integration um, also changed, meaning now our e-commerce platform is direct directly talking to the sub-retail system um, via an OData API. So all the orders are being placed um, in sub-retail via order OData API, order updates, um, etc. And with that, um, we also want to change how the communication um, between the sub retail system and the e commerce system um, was being designed and, and established. Um, so, and, and maybe as a background, so HSE Home Shopping uh, Europe, we are running um, 24 hours, uh, seven days a week, 365 days um, a year. Um, and um, the motivation behind uh, behind integrating uh, via PubSub was obviously that we want to have that we want to show um, the latest information to our customers um, in the e-commerce platform without any further delay. Um, so, such as what is what is the current order status, um, what is the current available stock, um, and additional data. Um, why? Um, maybe okay. Let's quickly go to the next slide. So, as I mentioned, the sub retail system on the one side, and the one side on the other side, we have the HSE e-commerce platform, and we <clears throat> wanted to integrate that um, using the Google Cloud PubSub. So sort of an uh, event-driven architecture, uh, event-driven architecture um, approach. Uh, why did we 
choose this kind of scenario. Um, overall, in our architecture um, guidelines, we, we are trying to um, decouple the system and, and the processes as much as possible. So meaning, I mean, obviously, we do have an OData API where um, the e-commerce platform could also call the OData API for specific information, but um, our sub-retail system has um, planned downtimes, um, even though they are early in the morning, but they could also they could also be in worst case an unplanned downtime. Um, or during, you know, if you have to, if you're upgrading your system, use new support package or even EHP um, updates, um, the downtime will be longer than just a few hours and you won't be done at night. So we wanted to be make sure um, that the platform gets the information um, uh, via events and then stores the, the information also on their side to be a little bit more independent um, from our system. And before we we we, we uh, decided to go for or yeah before we, we even started looking at SAPU or uh, in parallel, there was also the question in the room for us. Um, well, maybe we could also build it ourselves, um, but. For my background experience before HSE, I was a product manager um, for SAP add-ons at a different company. And uh, from, from the experience, you know, building things is the easy part, but maintaining, documenting, adding additional functionality like monitoring, error handling, um, et cetera, PP, that is actually the hard part. Um, and we had some brief discussions internally, um, and then obviously on the other side, you also need to keep keep up with a cloud a Google Cloud pops up. What if they change their API uh, and other things? Uh, you need to be aware of. And it was was uh, relatively quick. We were it was clear for us that we will not build this solution our, on our own, and. We found the um, ASAPIO integration add-on. Um, first, the NetWeaver enablement add-on um, for a sub-event mesh, and then we talked to ASAPIO, and luckily they also had the uh, corresponding connector for the Google Cloud pops up that we're using. Um, so, what 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 did we start with? First of all, the most important part was for us that we have um, whenever an order status is being updated, um, such events um, should be pushed to our e-commerce platform. Um, this was also our, our proof of concept, which we finished in like around about two days, you know, getting everything up and running, doing the, the implementation. Um, but it was rather quick and also quite successful. Um, the e-commerce platform then um, we're not pushing directly. They're they're pulling from our pops up um, subscription. They're pulling the data, not not getting the data pushed. And then um, we added additional financial events that are relevant, and also the stock delta events. And all all of these uh, are getting um, pulled from the HSE e-commerce platform uh, via the subscriptions. And overall, I think the final implementation for us took about um, three to four weeks, uh, and then we were done with all the implementations. Um, if you're wondering about this little icon here, this was just an additional um, information. So the the event specification that we are following is uh, the cloud cloud events. Um, which is also a specification written um, by, by SAP. And if you want to find further details, you can check out cloudevents.io. OK, um, so these are the events that we're publishing. And um, what I will do now, I will show you a demo 
in our system just to give an overview what is happening how does the process look like i'm just gonna stop sharing real quick and try to close powerpoint yes okay And then just give me one second. To log in to our environment. Okay, now you should see the environment. Um, this is our staging environment. Um, and sorry, we don't have, since our main focus of Home Shopping Europe is the Dach region, so Germany, Austria, Switzerland, uh, we don't have an English UI. Um, but basically here you see the, you see the orders um, with all the different statuses that we have. So this these orders have already been shipped. This has been canceled and this is still in progress. And what I'm just gonna quickly do, I'm gonna create a new order. Let's buy the makeup one more time. And then I'm gonna show you what's happening in the background of our sub retail system and in the uh, sub U add-on. All right, so the order has been placed. And now we're gonna check what's happening in the background of our system. Okay, here we go. This is the order. Um, this is now the order number from our sub retail system. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> um, someone was not muted. Okay, um, so sub retail system. So what is actually happening once the the um, once the order has been placed? Um, they calling the OData. Um, our old data API, the order is being saved, and then um, at a specific customer exit, um, we write a status event. But um, this, the status event is not directly being. Um, so the first thing that's happening is you you might all of you are um, aware of the BDCP2 of the change pointers tables. Um, so first of all, a change pointer is being created. Um, we can already see that this has been processed already by, so this happens, the process um, is set to true once the Asapio job is running, which is running uh, on, a, on a each minute, so to say. Um, and I can even check, so this is the, Asapio um, monitor where you can where you can monitor the the um, transactions. I'm just gonna check out for the events. So this is the event um, that we just um, fired and triggered to to the Google Cloud pops up. You could even go to um, have a look at the payload. Um, but since um, 
since PubSub is is uh, it's necessary to send the data via base base sixty four encoded, uh, you won't. Uh, this looks like gibberish. I mean, you could encode it and then have a look what the real data says, but for us that's not um, relevant relevant as of now. So nothing happened yet. We we just placed the order. Um, obviously, in the front or in our uh, um, customer facing front end, it still says. Um, it's in progress, so um, nothing happened yet. So what I will do, I will process this order now. Uh, this is something I'll do manually now for the for the demo. Just quickly removing the delivery block as a first step, and then I guess most all of you know the drill. Um, Lovely transactions VAO2. Create the delivery. Save it. Okay, perfect. VAO2 uh, yeah, and. Okay, so I have booked the uh, transaction now. So what we will see uh, Okay, sorry in process. Okay, this is still from the OData API call where I removed the order block. And now we should also, let me just verify that what I did was actually correct. So sorry about that. I um, have to use a backup solution. So that's what we already did. We processed the order. Let me just skip to that part. Um, yes, we already saw that. Okay, now basically doing the delivery. <laughs> That's what I thought I just did, but apparently it did not work. Um, yes, and basically that's the step I wanted to show you now as, as my user, I uh, an additional change point I got created, um, and this has also been processed. Here we see it again. We do see the additional events that are running towards the Google Cloud pops up system. And once that event is processed, we can also see it in the in the monitor, in the SAP here monitoring, and then we can also see um, the status update in our UI immediately in the in the e-commerce platform that the status is being updated to send. So apologies once more that um, I couldn't show the full demo, but I guess you sh you should be able to to um, get an understanding of how the process works. Uh, I will just quickly go through um show you once more the 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 high level um point of view yeah so in the in the sub retail system the the status of the order item was was updated um this causes that a change pointer is being created um the, the Asabio framework then um, processes the change pointers. From the change pointer data, it reads the, the relevant data that um, is needed. Um, with the Google Cloud pops up, uh, what is actually nice, we don't have to send. So, you know, this is the, the staging environment where not that much is going on. On our production environment, this, this looks completely different. We have uh, hundreds uh, and up to thousands events per, per second. 
Um, and what it what the PubSub connector allow, allows us to do is not send each event um, individually, but um, collect, um, let's say, for example, 200 events. And then um, if we have these uh, 200 events, then they're being sent to uh, to the PubSub system. PubSub um, splits the payload then into individual um, events again. The events are being stored inside the subscription and then our e-commerce platform pulls um, those events and processes the events. I just have to switch the screen once more. Oh, this is um, yes, and then uh, I guess all of you are interested. Okay, um, what does it mean? I mean, ag again, implementing, but then you also need to have you know the operations part. Um, maybe just to give you an idea. So today we we process millions of events um, per day, um, really without much system impact. That is something we we closely monitored, especially at the beginning. Uh, especially our SAP basis team was was um, you know new solution additional processing. They were worried about okay um, that this integration will take up too many processes and also too much load on the CPU, um, etc. Um, we're, we're still closely monitoring um, our systems, uh, but even so. At night, we have some some huge uh, batch jobs that are running, which doing massive changes um, um, to sales orders and other objects. And even then, we we realized um, the CPU goes up maybe five to ten percent higher than um, than usual than before. But overall, the system impact was very small for us. And what are we doing today to um, to make sure that everything is working and we're getting notified in case um, things are not running? So first of all, we monitor our job execution um, itself in the sub retail system. We're doing that with an external tool. Some of you might be familiar with uh, UC4. So we check the frequency, we check the duration, and if the duration is too long or um, the job might have not even started um, as we expected. We, um, we're getting email alerts to um, our on-call duty um, team so, so that even at night, if something breaks, um, they will check it and try to fix it. But um, not only do we monitor our sub retail system, um, Google actually provides um, best practices for, for PubSub monitoring. So on the one side, we also check the, the um, do we send con continuously send um, events from the sub retail system? Are, are they actually received here by PubSub? So the publisher health is being checked um to make sure that um yeah the data is actually being being the events are being received and then additionally we're also checking even though it's not fully our responsibility um in the end it's the the e-commerce team that is responsible for pulling the events but we are also checking if these is subscribers are um healthy meaning um that we don't end up all of a sudden in a huge um, backlog of events that haven't been processed. So we're, we're checking if events um, are older than one hour um, and if a certain threshold of events is in the in the um, in the subscription and if these thresholds um, yeah, do not do not fit. Um, then we get alerts to our 
to our team to make and then uh, connect with the e-commerce team to check if everything is okay and everything is running as expected. So now I think we come to the question and answers from your side. Right, so if you have a question, please unmute yourself and then uh, just ask the question. Yeah, um, I have a question. I don't know if you can hear me. Um, yes, this we is do you. Thank you for your presentation, by the way. Um, I have just a little question. Um, why did you decide to to group the mess, the events people are sending to PubSub, and then you split it in the um, in the in the PubSub broker? Is uh, any any um, is just to save um, time, or is just because you have a lot of traffic? Or what is the logic behind uh, this this decision? Yes, Thank especially you. during night um, when the batch shops are running, you know, we send um, hundreds of thousands of events in, in very short time. And in order to avoid to open, um, I mean, even though in, all the traffic is run internally in Google Cloud, it still means that the sub retail system, you know, is opening up a connection during the REST API call, closing the connection. And um, this allows us to to reduce the load on the on the ICM and other important parts um, of the of the system. Okay, thank you. Uh, hello, uh, I do have a question. Uh, so, in your landscape, so what is the rationale uh, behind you know grouping the events into batches? And then, you know, I mean, shorter batches and then delivering onto the pop sub rather than delivering it immediately. I mean, is that you reverted back to these batches since you got a performance impact or the decision was to drive them in batches during the implementation phase itself? Um, actually, so what we initially started with was um, mm -hmm. our first POC was actually not even with pop sub. We used the SAP event mesh. And okay. SAP event mesh is only able, you know, you always have to, for each event, you have to make one um, additional, you have to make one call um, towards the REST API from SAP event mesh. Mm -hmm. And there we, we actually monitored that in order to handle the, the additional load, we would have to deploy additional uh, cloud infrastructure. We, we did deploy some of it, but um, with the PubSub connector, um, and since we're running the job every minute, mm -hmm. it's not as not super crucial for us to have a real real time. We are more ne okay, near okay. to real time, so it was okay for us to wait for for one minute, um, collect all the events, and then uh, reduce the amounts of um, external calls um, done by the ICM and other components inside the SAP system. Okay, so you mean to say like, you know, I mean, it does not have a performance degradation within the SAP. However, you have done it to reduce the number of HTTP calls, right? Yes, exactly. To minimize the HTTP overheads. Okay. Okay, okay. Totally got it. Thank you. Thank you very All much. All right. You're welcome. Martin, you're on mute. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, yeah, one thing I wanted to add about that that point is also that you had these bursts of events uh, during certain run times at night where some batch chips do, did some mass updates, which were still touching the same or producing the same events. So that is typically a scenario where it is very good if the connector can do this kind of batching mm -hmm. because it uh, greatly reduces the overhead because otherwise you would try to basically separate out these these kind of events so that the batch job produce different events than uh, during normal working um, hours um, that can that are more easily 
um, handled with a with a real real time. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And maybe just to add, so from our experience ever since um, we went live last year, I think June, yeah, I think June it was, um, we never had any issues. So uh, sometimes we get alerts from that the subscribers are not keeping up with the event flow. Um, and then we have a quick talk to our e-commerce team, but that's a different part of the integration. But overall, um, we never had any issues that the um, Google Cloud PubSub connector uh, didn't didn't uh, manage to handle uh, the workload or our system. So we're happy and it's just it is just running. And actually in May, we're starting uh, the next integration of events. Um, regarding uh, invoice data that is uh, being sent to the e-commerce platform. Perfect. Any more questions from, from the attendants? So if there are no more questions, um, then uh, I thank you very much uh, for uh, for your demo and and the whole uh, presentation you did. Um, and I will uh, perhaps show a few slides on the upcoming release. Um, don't have that many minutes left, but uh, then you can get an idea on what is coming up in in our next release. That's will be released next week. I think Tuesday next week. Um, and uh, one one point that, that did come up uh, in the presentation from Christian was the show trace uh, for the Google Connector. Um, actually, it is already in place since the October release last year. Um, you will now have a decoded view of the payload so that you get a better idea of what was actually sent. Um, but this is just minor detail there. Um, as you said, Christian, you as you don't have any problems, you probably never look look into those uh, into those traces anyway. Um, Correct. We only did it at the beginning during implementation, but then it's just running. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So with, if you if you upgrade, you will get a, an improvement there that you can actually see the pilot. Um, Perfect. Good to know. <laughs> But let me um, let me share also my screen so that we can go through a few bullets of what's what's coming up in the next release. Um, so um, yeah, we we of course have been working on the on the tool, and I will pretty much focus on what's coming in the in the core framework. So as you might know. Around the core framework, there's always also field class integration, and there are different features for the different uh, connectors. So those I won't touch because uh, we only have five minutes left, I think. Um, so uh, one one big feature that we added in the in the April release, so it was in a kind of better release in the October uh, release we had last year, is the payload designer that should simplify. Uh, or improve how you can do codeless definition of your payload and also of the data extraction so that you get a better UI combining different tables and then um, also specifying renamings for the uh, for the JSON that will be produced. So this is now part of the of the April release uh, coming next week. Um, and this also will allow us to also give you, some pre-configured payload packages where we have already defined the right extractions for for uh, typical objects that we see a lot: sales orders, purchase orders, invoicing data, uh, and other master data. So that will be made available in our download portal as 
as templates that you can then copy from. Um, so to get your head start on if you if you design your own events and uh, are not quite sure what are the involved tables, so you get a little bit of guidance there um, to get you started. And then, um, yeah, we also added a new support for, for async API specifications. So this uh, currently is an export um, of the configuration that you do in our framework in, in async API format. So not sure if you are aware of it. It is uh, a standardization process, um, very similar to open API for the REST-based interfaces, so for the more synchronous. And this is now the event uh, answer for it, for, uh, for these asynchronous um, APIs that are, uh, that are defined there. And this will always work if you have a, a, a codeless-based um, payload and extraction. So you have to have to use either our database view extractors or the new payload designer with the, with the extractor. Um, to, to actually get the schema export and everything that you need for that async API. But if you are utilizing some API management tool, then um, this can be really helpful that you don't have to generate those manually anymore. But uh, you will get now a report where you can export them. And then, of course, there are uh, more uh, a set of general improvements and fixes. In the, in the overall framework, what I want to highlight is the improved formatting options. So we already had some renaming um, options for the database view-based payloads. Um, but with the new release, you also get uh, to influence the hierarchy um, of the payload and uh, have a little bit more options on, on how, the, how the payload will actually look like in the end. Um, yeah, I think we only have time to touch up a little bit on on the on the more detailed topics. So the payload designer will give you a a drag and drop UI where you build out your your joins basically of the involved tables, and you get then a UI to choose all the fields. And um, we did that so that we can actually run in a way where we don't have to to code these, so there is no coding generated. There are no data dictionary objects or other dictionary objects created for it. So you don't have to create a new database view, um, but you you just click together um, which tables you want to, to extract and then which fields to choose from these tables, and then you're already good to go. And the extractor then does, based on your configuration, Built during runtime, a um, uh, the the extraction and same goes for the formatting then as well. Um, we also added uh, the new formatting options. So one thing that was already available is a table and field renaming. We did restructure it a little bit, so there is a report coming with it. There. So if you already use it, um, you can change to the new. Um, to the new configuration way, um, there will is a new option to basically camel case. So there's a standard that if you have typical SAP names uh, where the names are actually separated by underscores, you can automatically camel case that for your JSON, so um, that the underscores are removed basically, and the next uh, character will then be uppercased. So that's uh, that's an easy option if you have a lot of fields already and don't want to make a separate rename for all the fields. Um, you get a new option to skip fields in the payload. So sometimes you have fields like the client field in an SAP table or um, other fields that you just need for the for the joining of the tables, but you don't actually want to output on the on the payload. You can now skip them when the payload is generated. Um, and you can define how the how the tables relate to each other and how the hierarchy in the in the payload should look like. So as you might know, the 
the format always tries to to uh, to structure the JSON and uh, make subobjects of the different subtables, and uh, this now gives you control over uh, on which level each each subsection should occur. And these are included in all the database view based formatters. Um, so far, we had quite a few for the different connectors. There were different formatters. Um, but there is also a new formatter. It is especially used for the payload design, but works also for database views based extractions, um, which basically combines all the features. In a, in a now better better structured way, so you can rely on that one format uh, um, to work across the across the different um, format as you might had before. Yeah, I think with that we are we are close to our end. So um, I will thank you again for um, for the attendance and. Uh, Florian, I give back to you uh, for any last words or any last things we want to say. Oh, thank you. So I will close down um, with uh, a final slide that you now whenever what we presented today and many thanks to Christian and Martin to prepare all that and, and demonstrate it. Um, when that resonated with you, though, there's more on our website and um, yeah, please feel free to, to reach out to us anytime. Thank you.